This is crazy, man. So, here we are again. Last time we made this video, I had a little disclaimer in the beginning, and I urged you to keep an open mind and an open heart. What we witnessed here on the banks of Lake Eyasi with the Hadzabe hunter-gatherers challenged me, and no doubt it challenged you. And I was wondering if we came back, if we could have a crazier experience than last time. It turns out, whoo! <laughs> we definitely could, and I urge you this time as well. Keep an open mind, keep an open heart. These are some of the last hunter-gatherers on the planet, and they live traditionally. And I'm just so fortunate to be able to experience it myself and also to share this experience with you on YouTube. So, <laughs> that out of the way, get ready for a wild ride. The Hadza people. The last time we were here, it was crazy. <sighs> this is exciting. Holy shit. Go, 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 go. Ah, ah. While we did have a very successful hunt, the baboons eluded us. I was invited back this time for a longer 72-hour hunting trek and deeper into baboon territory. A larger plan meant a larger group. Sokolo, the tribe's leader, joined us again along with Cha'aba, No No No, Shokua, and Mandola. They brought some fresh faces. Tata, Sapo, Kodanya, Mayoya, Babua, and Teitu. Our local guide Yusuf is back too. He grew up here and he's our key to being able to communicate with the Hadzabe. And my man Gumbo from Experiential Travel Africa, who organized this trip. As for me, they call me Coco, which means friend. Good morning, guys. Oh, Ugali. Ugali for breakfast. I'll take some. <laughs> oh no no, it's good to see you man. <laughs> Where's your baboon skin? <laughs> oh, it's back. <laughs> it's back at, at the other camp. <laughs> After breakfast, we suit up and get ready. First though, water. The group all sit down in the shade of a giant baobab tree. It has a hole in it. And another Hadzabe hunter casually climbs in. I peer up inside the baobab to see wooden steps have been hammered inside. Then, I get stung. <laughs> I was wondering what it was, <laughs> but I just got stung by a bee. I don't think I've ever seen anybody climb a tree from the inside before. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> so, let me ask you, which are you scared of most? Heights, confined spaces, stinging insects? Because this has all three. Is that him getting stung? Uh, is that him getting stung by bees? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, look at the bees. It's like a coffin full of bees. Yeah, no thanks. Wow. Yama Koko. Man. What way? Dark way near. Look at look at me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let me take this back. Ah, <laughs> look Oh my god, look at that. I still don't quite understand, and maybe I never will, the unspoken agreement the Hadzabe have with bees. Maybe some ancestral pact with nature. Or maybe they just don't give a shit about being stuck. Oh. 
Look at that. Look at the color of that honey. It is like the deepest golden yellow I've seen in my entire life. It's like it's like topaz. Mm. Oh, it's good, man. Mm -mm. There is nothing else like this honey in the plant. I could put this into an IV and mainline it. It's so good, I'm eating the wax. <laughs> It's that good. It's that good. It's worth getting stung in the tongue for. It's that good. Our honey tree climber's name is Alua. Remember this face. We'll see him again, and he'll play a reoccurring role in this wild adventure. Right after, we find something, and it begins with a screech. It's a family of mongoose, mongooses, or whatever they're called. They go in our pockets for later. As we're sprinting through the bush trying to catch animals, weaving in and out of each other and dogs and everything, the poison arrows are like stuck in my mind that one little nick on any of those that they're holding is like the the, the magic wand of death, my heart will stop. So I'm trying to keep a little bit of space, but they're being really careful with them, which is probably a good thing because they kill you. That's the whole point. minutes or so, we stop and we listen. Sokolo finds the fresh dung of a large antelope called an eland. It's close. This is the most dangerous thing in the woods. Yeah, that's, that's the track. That's this way. All right, all right. Came this way. Oh, I'm getting excited. Oh, my shirt is getting destroyed. Oh, shit. Worth it, though. Worth it, though. I'm gonna have some new scars for sure, but... Scars are always good stories, right? It's uh, it's huge. It sees us though. It's starting to run, and it's on the other side of the ravine. So, oh, these jungle thorns. Oh my god! I feel so awkward and slow. <laughs> We didn't get it though. I don't think we got it. Half the crew is still chasing. But swing and a miss. Despite all that hard work. In the craziness, we all got separated. So we chill. While we wait for the group, Tata hammers a rock on a large piece of wood. The bark will be stripped, and these will eventually be carved into bows. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> What's going on? Yeah, good. What happened to, to your tissue? Uh, <laughs> this is part of the job, right? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh my god, half my shirt's gone. <laughs> See, I've just You've got Off on the side, man. Mandola, Tata, and Tetu have concocted a new plan to attack the baboons at night. <laughs> they explain. <laughs> It's <laughs> Now, I don't speak Hadzane, but I think I get what they're saying. Hey, Mike, when we go, zip it. Message received. Okay. And what do we do until then? Chill? No. Yeah. Uh, now it's chilling and maybe try to find when it goes So back. the plan for now, then, is to chill. And that's something I'm really good at. So, <laughs> see you in a bit. We miss the eland, but with wood, honey, and mongoose in our pockets, we trek back to camp. On the way, we encounter a member of the Datuga tribe grazing his cattle. This is what Sokolo speaks about during my interview with him later. It's one of the biggest threats to the Hadzabe. Their land is being encroached on from all sides by other tribes who graze animals, making all the wild ones flee. At breakfast, they had been eating ugali because it's getting increasingly harder to hunt food. There are 1,500 Hadza people left on the planet, many of which have had to abandon their typical way of life. They've had to modernize. In my eyes, this is the real world. This is us. I know some of you don't think so. I know some of you judge. But honestly, is this modernization for better or for worse? Is it right or is it wrong? Some could argue that even making this video destroys their culture. Others could argue that these videos could save it, to bring awareness to something that's slowly disappearing. But I don't know the answer. Maybe one of you does. We speak about endangered animals all the time, but rarely endangered people. There are cultural extinctions too. Languages, practices, rituals, those can all go away forever as well. All I know is that if this all goes away, so will some of the magic in this world. Once back at the camp, I do that interview I spoke about. That video has been posted, but I'll give you a teaser. I asked Sokolo, what's the most important thing in life? Monaco. In Monaco. I think, uh, I think I know what the most important thing in his life is because he's like, oh my God, the baboons are coming close. They're right over there. All right. First though, we had dinner to make. Remember our agreement in the beginning? Keep an open mind, right? All right, remember Sokolo? He's got the mongoose in his hand. He just handed me a piece. Cheers! <laughs> and he also gave me some ugali. It was just like, mm, corn flour. Thing is, 
<laughs> part of me is like, <laughs> do I really want to eat this? And part of me is like, hell yeah, you got to eat it. You're in the middle of nowhere with the tribe. You've come to party with them. You've come to hunt with them. You got to eat the gifts. You got to eat the offerings. So here we are. Mongoose oh, yeah, down the hatch. Mm. 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 Kind of chewy, kind of bony. You think like, meat's not like ice cream flavors. Every Everyone just doesn't really have a different taste. This just tastes like meat, basically. It's a little bit chewier, a little bit gamier than I, I normally like it, but honestly, after hiking 17 kilometers today, through thorns and rocks, this tastes pretty damn good. So I might go back for seconds. <laughs> What are they saying, Gumbo? Hmm? What are they saying? Well, actually, it's, it's the, I mean, it's evening now, so they are kind of trying to um, plan for the attack of the baboon. Mm. So they normally don't go with dogs, and uh, they will need uh, like a few people, and they are going to have like a stealth movement. So they don't need noise, and actually, um, they don't need like um, people who like got fear. So mm. only warrior from the remaining group they have to go. So they are kind of selecting people who would be going. I, however, was not selected as a warrior. Uh, so let me get this straight. They were saying I couldn't go because they are going with no light. Yes. Why? Big point. And also no shoes. Uh, shoes you can have, but uh, you have to walk gently. Gently, but they're taking yeah. their shoes off because of the uh, sound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're scared about the sound. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm already f I'm filled with puncture wounds from from the thorns today. My shirt's half torn off my body. Yeah, Do you think so we could? The question is, can you walk without light? I will try. And if it's okay. too much, then I'll turn around. But I would love to try if it's possible. And if I have to, if I have to take off my shoes, dude, I've been training my entire life for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worn shoes since I was like six years old. I love going barefoot. So if there was one moment to test my ultimate <laughs> hobbit feet, this is the moment. Um, and I promise I won't scare the baboons away. <laughs> okay. I'll try. Then I'd love to join. Uh -huh. okay, that's good. Okay. That's good. Can we ask? Sokolo. They said yes. So, with a belly full of mongoose and killer bee honey, I set off with a Hadzabe tribe to raid a baboon camp at night. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming See you soon. Are you coming too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What Yusuf explains is that there'll be two groups. Both will sneak up. One will make a distraction while the other attacks from the other side. Along the way, we find a fire. It's Alua. He wants to join. And he's got some ammunition for us too. I walk in the darkness with the pit of my elbow over my face to not get thorns in my eyes. My other hand pats around like the feelers of an insect. About 20 minutes later, we hear demons. A whistle. The other group is in position. It's the signal. It's the signal to attack. Ah, 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 
Damn. I think that's it. They climbed down the side of the cliff. <laughs> Pretty smart. Yeah. They got one. Holy shit. Oh, that's a gory sight. You, you got it. I had never seen baboons up close before. It's strange seeing something so human being hauled away for food with hands and fingers. But yeah, it's not coco. <laughs> While returning, we pass the point where we launched the attack. We tell the others we saw one climb over the edge. Chaaba wants to take a shot. It was like watching someone swish a full court basketball shot blindfolded. It was an incredible display of skill. Are you serious? He hit that from like 50 meters away? This is crazy, man. <laughs> Superhero. I have never seen anything so crazy. This is crazy, man. Life, I didn't so believe a woman. And from here to there. This is crazy. <laughs> the baboon gets away, but we'll be back in the morning after the poison has set in. I decided to join Where? the guys for a night by the fire. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Just uh, watch out for those poison arrows by my head. And it should be a good night's sleep. Huh? What's that quote? You don't tell stories about the nights you got lots of sleep? Yeah, it was one of those nights. The next morning, we head out to try to find the baboon shot with poison arrows the previous night. The dogs come with us, and this time, I'll let them tell the story. Together with noses and eyes, we search for clues. There's blood. Look at this. Oh, yeah, and the yeah, pool. Yeah. So that's from last night. Watch my step here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. There's little flecks of blood. That's right. So we found the arrow from last night, yeah? Yeah. Bye, look at this. Good job, So he, he pulled it out. Yeah. 
pulled it out. Uh, we're all a bit stumped. We can't find anything. And then, chaos. Someone had spotted one that was still alive. We chase. You know the drill by now. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> it sounds like they got one, yeah? Oh, man. Oh, I see a lot of wagging tails on dogs, man. That's gotta be a good sign. A lot of happy dogs. An arrow sticking 90 degrees out of the ground. Look at the size of that animal. Oh my god, ouch. Yeah. It's a big male, yeah? Oh my god. Took coming back. Took a second try. Joining the guys one more time. We got one. We got more than one. Oh, and it's hard to look at. They take the knife and they slice its back end. Just cutting to, to look if there is uh, fat here. Why? Uh, they didn't like to, uh, to, eat, uh, to eat as well. They like to eat. Yeah, <laughs> they prefer it was because it's fat. That's know. their favorite part. Yeah, that's why they meant yeah, kill it and first try to cut it to see if there's fat inside the ass. <laughs> Baboon ass is the favorite cut and it's top of the menu today. <laughs> Some of the dogs have serious injuries in the war with baboons. Alua, the honey climber, finds a snail shell and relieves himself inside of it. Then he pours the contents into the wounds of the dogs as a natural antiseptic. All in all, two baboons were caught. All that hard work will be enough food for a couple days. So, we head back to camp for a feast. Uh. <laughs> Listen, I know you can handle it, but you two can't handle it. I've learned the hard way. So to see the uncut, uncensored versions of the hunt and the preparing of the baboon, it's got to go on Patreon. So to support me and also to see the real version of this, all of, all of the bits, viewer discretion is advised, head to patreon.com slash fearless and far. I'll see you there. When they they kill the animal, like uh, antelopes or baboon, mm -hmm. so they take the, the skin from the tail and they put uh, to the bow, like a decoration, but also there's another meaning. So when they put it, uh, later they can go to count them and, and they will know how many uh, animals you killed. And also it's their way to become a chief if you kill a lot of animals, so they choose you to be a chief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's beginning to rain a little bit, so I rushed to get all my stuff together before it got soaked and then came back and the baboon was gone. 
in 10 minutes. There's just the skin left, which I have mixed feelings about. There's something called the grandmother rule. I think Anthony Bourdain first coined it, where if you're in grandma's kitchen, you gotta, you gotta eat the turkey <laughs> every single time. And so I never really refuse an invitation. If I was offered baboon, would I have eaten it? Yeah, I don't know. Would you have eaten it? Let me know in the comments. Listen, this trip, it's impossible for me to plan it all myself. So I have some people, you know Gumbo already. Gumbo is my Africa guy. He makes my Africa dreams come true and he can make yours come true. Pretty much anywhere in Africa, if you're looking for a private trip to do something very cool, he's your man. Gumbo, any last words for the people? Hey, this is Captain Gumbo. Welcome to Africa. Let's go. <laughs> and remember to check out the uncensored version of this video on Patreon. And guys, thank you. I can't wait to show you more of this big, beautiful world here on Fearless and Far. See ya.